Hello everyone and welcome back to the next lecture of control systems. In this presentation, we are going to discuss the DC gain of a system. So let's get started. The DC gain is an important parameter of a system. This is the gain of a system when frequency is zero. And that's why DC gain of a system is also called as the zero frequency gain. So suppose we are having a transfer function representing a system and we put s equal to zero in the transfer function, then we will have the zero frequency gain and that zero frequency gain is regarded as the DC gain of the system. So let's understand this with the help of an example given g s equal to two multiplied with s plus two over s plus three multiplied with s plus four, find the DC gain. So we are having a transfer function representing a system and we need to find out the DC gain of this system. So moving on to the solution, we are having two methods to find out the DC gain of this system. Let's go with method number one. The method number one is comparison with the time constant form. If we convert this transfer function to its standard time constant form, we can find out the DC gain by comparing this transfer function with the time constant form. So in order to convert this transfer function to its standard time constant form, we need to take two common in the numerator, three common in the denominator from this term and four common from this term. So we will have G s equal to two multiplied with two multiplied with s over two plus one over three multiplied with four multiplied with s over three plus one multiplied with s over four plus one. We have taken two common from this term, three common from this term and four common from this term. Now, if we solve this two multiplied with two will be equal to four and four and four will get canceled. So we will have G s equal to s over two plus one divided by three multiplied with s over three plus one multiplied with s over four plus one. Now we have this transfer function in the time constant form. And if we compare this transfer function to the standard time constant form, we can say the value of k is one over three. So we can write k is equal to one over three, which is equal to 0.33. And in the standard time constant form, the k represents the DC gain of a system. So we can say the DC gain of this transfer function is 0.33. So now we have calculated the DC gain of this system by comparing it with the time constant form. We have one more method to find out the DC gain of this system. So moving on to method number two, for type zero system, we can write the DC gain K as limit S tending to zero GS. As we have discussed, the DC gain is the gain of a system when frequency is zero. So we will simply put the frequency term that is the S term equal to zero in this transfer function. And hence we can calculate the DC gain of this system. So substituting the transfer function G s in this equation, we will have K equal to limit S tending to zero two multiplied with S plus two divided by S plus three multiplied with S plus four. Now, if we substitute the limit S tending to zero in this term, we will have four over 12 and hence the value of K is equal to one over three, which is 0.33. But this expression K equal to limit S tending to zero G s is only valid for a type zero system. We are given a type zero system because there is no pole at the origin and hence we can apply this formula. Now suppose we are given a type one or a type two system and we are asked the DC gain of that system, then what we will do? We cannot apply this formula. Surely we can apply the method number one that is the comparison with the time constant form, but we cannot apply this particular expression for a type one system. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Given G s equal to two multiplied with S plus two, over s multiplied with s plus 3 multiplied with s plus 4, find the DC gain. So now we are having a type 1 system here because one pole is present at the origin and we are asked to find out the DC gain. Now, if we apply the same expression limit s tending to 0 g s, then in that case, when we substitute the limit s tending to 0, then this term will become 0 and the DC gain will become infinite. But the DC gain of a system is never infinite. Surely we can apply the method number one, that is the comparison with the time constant form. If we convert this transfer function to its standard time constant form, we need to take two common from the numerator, three common from the denominator in this term and four common from this term. And then we can easily calculate the value of DC gain K by just comparing with the standard time constant form. So this will be the homework for you to find out the DC gain of this system by using the method number one. I will discuss the method number two for this system. So moving on to the solution, 
for a type 1 system, the DC gain K is equal to the limit S tending to 0, S multiplied with GS. So if we substitute the value of GS in this expression, we will have K equal to limit S tending to 0, S multiplied with 2 multiplied with S plus 2 over S multiplied with S plus 3, S plus 4. Now in this case, this S and this S will get cancelled. And then after that, when we will substitute the limit S tending to 0, we will have the limit as equal to 4 over 12. And we can find out the value of K equal to 1 over 3, which is equal to 0.33. We will understand the significance of this expression in chapter number 3, that is in the time response analysis. As of now, you can take this as a formula to find out the DC gain of a type 1 system. Similarly, for a type 2 system, we can have the DC gain K equal to limit S tending to 0 S square multiplied with GS. So in a type 2 system, we will have two poles at the origin and this S square in the numerator will cancel the effect of those two poles. And then we can apply the limit S tending to 0 to find out the DC gain. I will give you a homework problem based on this expression. Try this question on your own and post your answers in the comment section. We will discuss some more problems based on DC gain of a system in the upcoming lectures. I'll end this lecture here. See you in the next one.